How do you practice putting? And is there a better way? Is there a quicker way to get really good and take the pressure off your putting game? I believe the answer is yes. Let's tee it up. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Data Access Golf, the podcast. Thanks for being with me here today. Vlog, and we've also got the podcast going on at the same time, simulcast, I guess is what we're calling it. So I wanted to take some time to talk about putting a little bit. As I've, I've mentioned before, we've got our benchmark app in there to play. It's going to be a free app. It's going to be super simple. We have made this so simple to keep track of your game and make it so obvious what we should be practicing on that I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about how that's going to help. And getting into that, the cool thing about developing an app is when you start getting in and you start thinking about inputting it and you start thinking about walking on the golf course and inputting it. And so many of the golf apps now are so complicated that, um, yeah, boy, they're just, they kind of annoy me, right? They take so much freaking time. I've got, you know, all the little trackers on, you know, the ends of my clubs and, uh, you know, all this data that we're gathering, which is great. But if you use too many, it can get a little frustrating. So we've tried to take this app and to make it as simple and easy as possible to use, totally free, and, but it will give you an idea of the benchmarks. And as you know, as we review the benchmarks on Mondays going through the winner's data to kind of see how they got, the, how they got to the victory circle, we like to look at a lot of stats. And one of those that we break down in a lot of detail is putting. But there's no real way to easily track putting as we are thinking through the app and trying to figure out the best way to do it. So we're trying to come through with a much easier way for us to get better at putting and started looking at some data and pulling some stuff out, trying to think back to stuff. My grandpa was just so smart when it came to putting. He always had these little tricks and drills and all this kind of stuff. But when it was all said and done, the data revealed something that I think is very cool. And hopefully, and and I'm going to have the app made to allow this sort of of putting tracking. It's gonna make it super simple, but it's also going to take off, if you practice in this manner based on what we'll talk about today, it's going to make your life so much easier on the putting green. I know that there can be a lot of angst when it comes to putting, which um, which is weird because it's such a simple movement, right? But we're trying to read the green, we're trying to be um, sort of artistic, right? When maybe some of us don't like to be. And we've got to up hills and down hills and side slopes and all that different kinds of grasses and grains and all that to worry about. We've got people walking all around the hole making the lumpy donut that Pels used to talk about. So all of that comes into putting. But putting itself is actually a pretty simple process if we look at the data and start um, applying some strategic um, practices that I think will make it a lot easier. So what I did is I got on, and again, I'm using all data from 2018. I'm not, I'm not going to like half data or anything in 2019. I'd like to see a full year of data to get a really good understanding of what the tour pros were doing. So I went and pulled all the data from um, all the putting stats. I pulled out the high of all those in every stat. And I mean, from over 35 feet, 30 to 35 feet, 25 to 30 feet, all the way down to inside five feet. I pulled the high and I pulled the average of all of that. And some interesting things started to come out. And then I went and looked at the average proximity to the hole when a green is hit in regulation. So the average um, pro was, in, when, it, when they hit the green, was an average of 38 feet away from the hole. That was the proximity to the hole. And the amount of putts that they made over 35 feet on average was 0.3. So less than 1%, less than one in a hundred, right? Really one out of 300, they would make from over 35%. So, and, and nobody, even the highest, nobody averaged 1%. So over 35 feet, the chances of us making that putt, very small, right? 30 to 35 feet, still less than 1% was the average. Um, 20, see, 20 to 20, say 25 to 30 feet, still less than 1%, 0.84%. 
So now we're talking 25 footers. We're not going to make a lot of those either. And, and then I kind of went down. But the thing that got interesting is if you get down to the number of inside five feet, the, the very top person in that category made 98% of his five footers, of, of five feet and in. Any putt inside five feet, 98%. The average was 83%. Now that is that becomes a very makeable distance, and if and so this is it. This is sort of my thinking behind it all, and I think that it's I'm, I'm going to implement it just based on the data. I think this is going to help a lot of folks do this. So from now on, we're only going to practice on the practice screen. We have limited amount of time, so we are going to do the majority of our practicing from five feet and in. We are going to become so very good from five feet and in that we have total confidence in our putting game from five feet and in. I mean, the hole's going to look like a trash can cover. Not that many people probably know what that means, but trash cans used to actually have, you know. So let's do this. The, the hole will look like Captain America's shield, right? That big. That's probably a, a better a better representation, right, of what, what, what's in our current vernacular. But anyway, so it's going to look huge. If all you do is practice, if all we do is practice all of our five footers and in. So one footer's great, two footer's great, three footer's great, whatever. What this does, um, obviously, is when you have putts over 35 feet or 20 to 25 feet or whatever that is, we know that we're not going to make we're going to make less than 1% of them. So we can just throw this idea of making it out. So clear your mind of that. Forget it. What you're going to do is now picture a 10-foot square area, a 10-foot a circle around the hole. And all you're going to try to do is get it with inside this 10-foot circle. You're just going to lag it up there. Anywhere in the circle will do because you know you're going to make 8 to 9 out of 10 of those. It's almost a, a, a sure two putt, right? And then when we get down into our, you know, the, the, the tour pros made 18 on average, 18% of their 15 to 20 footers, 30% of their 10 to 15 footers, but still just one out of three. And then also you've got 52% uh, of their five to 10 footers. But what this, um, this being so confident from five feet and in will do will free you up not only, when you're, not only when we're lagging out because we know it just has to be within a, a 10 foot circle with the pin being in the middle of the circle, but also when we've got 15 footers and 10 footers, it's going to be easier for us to put it 18 inches or two fit, feet by. And we're not going to worry so much about, we're not going to try to diet in the hole as often. We can be a little more aggressive. We don't have to be as scared. I think so many of us miss 10, 15 footers because we're terrified of the comebacker. Well, let's get rid of all that. Let's only practice five feet and in. We will become so good at five feet and in that it's a no-brainer for us. And if that's the case, it will take pressure off every other part of your game. You'll get up and down more often from over 35 feet. So that's three putt avoidance, which is excellent because your, your success rate, your, your expectations, which we talk about a lot, will be more realistic as you lag a putt up there to somewhere within five feet all the way around the hole. Um, your birdie putts, your par putts from five feet and in, they will feel much more comfortable. You'll be much more confident and put a good roll on the ball because we will feel so good from five feet and in. So that's what we're going to change the app to kind of help us sort of track that. But that is definitely something I would suggest implementing if you have felt any nervousness on the green at all. And if your, um, your statistics are any lower than, you know, 83% from five feet, 52%, 30%, any one of those, if they're lower than any of that from 10 to 15 or 5 to 10, I think this is the way to go. This is the putting strategy will make that will make a difference in your game. So uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts, what you think about it. I think it's going to simplify practice for us a lot. And just we're looking for ways to get better and we're looking for ways to simplify the game of golf. So those of us that have nine to fives, those of us that are stuck in climates where we only have four to five months a year to play, those of us who are stuck in an office most of the time, we're going to do everything we possibly can to give you every possible tool, technology, trick, strategy, whatever, to simplify the game of golf, to make it as fun as possible and as simple as possible. 
So hopefully that makes some sense. If you have any questions on that, let me know. Follow us on Instagram, Data Access Golf. Follow us on tri- Twitter, Data Access Golf. Facebook, Data Access Golf. Um, podcast, obviously, Data Access Golf podcast can be found, found on iTunes. So subscribe there and let me know your comments. Any one of those places you can put comments, we'll reply to them. I'm loving the questions. I really appreciated the, the question on how to set your club and your wrist hinge at the top yesterday. So let me know on all of that and definitely start practicing those five footers. If you've got just a couple minutes, five footers. If you want to do a couple lag putts, drop it to 35 feet and see if you can put it in a 10 foot circle. Um, a real funny practice drill that uh, Brad Faxon talked about, and I think Greg Norman did too, but he would picture a great big orange barrel and he would try to hit the orange barrel. And that's how it would work. Um, I used to take a pretty good sized towel and just lay it on a green and try to putt up to the towel. And if it was anywhere near the towel or landed on the towel, I was thrilled. And that's how I used to practice my lag putting until it became just a no-brainer. So try any one of those techniques if that helps. If you can picture a 10-foot circle, use that. That's great. But take the pressure off your lag putting. Take the pressure off your birdie putts from five feet in and your, and your second putts from five feet in. And watch how much simpler the game becomes and how much more enjoyable. So till next time, remember, better data always means better golf. Such in this situation. Until next time, we'll see you. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com, and we'll see you on the next episode.